Immediately after the outbreak of the First World War, some of Britain's most famous writers and artists were invited to contribute to an anthology entitled Princess Mary's Gift Book, with profits from the sales going to support patriotic causes. The contributors included Arthur Conan Doyle, Rudyard Kipling, J.M. Barry, Arthur Rackham, Edmund Dulac, and Edward Julius Detmold. Many of the stories and images in the book, whether they were set in the present or evoked history or classical mythology, were appeals for self-sacrifice and dedication to Britain's war effort. But Deadmall's main contribution seems oddly out of place. It's a striking colour image illustrating French writer Jean-Henri Fabre's essay about the ant lion, a terrible insect whose hidden trench in the ground lures an army of hapless ants to their deaths. In the context of Detmold's own life and of his impending experiences of war, it seems a fitting metaphor for the disasters of armed conflict which were then engulfing the world. Edward Detmold's inclusion in the volume was a recognition of his position as one of the leading illustrators of the day. Since the death of his twin Maurice six years earlier, he'd continued to produce etchings and paintings, but he'd become particularly well known for his illustrations of works, including The Fables of Aesop, and two books by the Belgian writer Maurice Metterlinck, The Life of the Bee and Hours of Gladness. Today, Metterlinck's works are almost forgotten, but at the time, he had a huge influence throughout Europe and beyond. And in 1911, he'd been awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. Metterlinck, like Jean-Henri Fabre, believed that it was by immersing themselves in nature and observing the amazing complexity of plant and insect life that human beings could begin to glimpse the wider meaning of the universe. And Detmold's illustrations perfectly conveyed that sense of wonder. His intricate and intimate images of nature seem almost to show us the world through the eyes of a bird, a frog or a bee. He also produced a series of black and white illustrations to Kipling's second jungle book and three volumes of animal illustrations designed for children. These books were announced on the covers as being by E.J. Detmold, though the texts of two of them, the Book of Baby Beasts and the Book of Baby Birds, were written by Florence Dugdale and included poems contributed anonymously by the novelist Thomas Hardy, while the text of the third, The Book of Baby Pets, was by children's writer Charles Cabery. Deadmold's works at this time hardly ever contain human figures. His birds and animals are sometimes delicate and ethereal, sometimes almost comically whimsical, sometimes ominous, but their eyes are always full of character and life.
But this wave of creativity was brought to an abrupt halt by the outbreak of the First World War. The war divided the artistic community. Some artists threw themselves enthusiastically into support of patriotic causes. Others volunteered for combat out of a sense of duty, despite their distaste for violence. Others again, including Edward Detmold, were appalled by what they saw as senseless destruction of life and refused to fight. When conscription was introduced in 1916, Detmold sought to register as a conscientious objector which would have enabled him to serve in a non-combat role. But his moral objection to war was not recognised by the official tribunal. And in May of that year, he appeared before a London magistrate's court on a charge of failing to present himself for military service. He insisted to the magistrate that while he might be guilty in technical legal terms, morally he was not. To which the magistrate's response was, I have nothing to do with morality in this court. Detmold was told that because he was in a better position in life than most of the other men who had deliberately refused to obey the act, he would be fined £10 with the alternative of two months imprisonment and would then be handed over to the military for forcible enrolment in their ranks. He was sent to serve with a training unit attached to the 7th Battalion of the Middlesex Regiment. But in August 1916, he was tried again, this time by a military court, for disobedience demonstrating willful defiance of authority. He was sentenced to six months imprisonment, later reduced to 84 days and so would have been released from prison late in 1916. Histories of conscientious objection in the First World War highlight the bullying and random punishments often inflicted on objectors who flouted military discipline. Edward Detmold had the added burden of being a conscientious objector with a German surname. There are no records to indicate what happened next, but we know that other conscientious objectors in a similar situation were taken to the front, sometimes in handcuffs, and were warned that any defiance of orders on the battlefront would be punishable by death. The 7th Battalion subsequently fought in the battles of Arras and Longuemarck and the Battle of the Hindenburg Lines. Detmold left no written account of his wartime experiences and barely seems to have mentioned them. None of the existing biographical sketches of his life refers in any way to his role as a conscientious objector. But the war haunted him and years later he was to produce a series of works whose details reveal these nightmarish images of the Western Front. And then it was over, and Edward Detmold returned to painting nature almost as though nothing had happened. But his encounter with war underlay all the creation of imagined worlds and all the uneasy search for meaning which followed. <laughs>